When it comes to raising money, almost everyone immediately goes to their friends and family first. We did too. They're easily accessible, there's generally no formal contracts, and there's no credit checks. You might have to give a short spiel about your business idea, make up some projections, and that's pretty much it. Well, I'm sure that you must all have very, very busy schedules, so I appreciate you meeting with us here today. What this is, is a business that I have worked toward my entire life. Hey. But if you come up short, or you're looking for alternatives, there are plenty of low-cost and even free options to explore. Let's look at free money options first. Number one, business competitions and grants. There are local, regional, and national competitions that offer tens of thousands of dollars to help you start your business. In general, you'll need to have a well-written business plan and or create some kind of presentation. I briefly cover business plans in Chapter 14. For example, there's the New York Startup Business Plan Competition, which offers $15,000 for first place and $7,500 for second place. The competition is in its 11th year and is open to all residents of New York City. Another example is the FedEx Small Business Grant Contest, which offers a $50,000 grant and $7,500 in FedEx office print and business services for first place, a $30,000 grant and $5,000 in services for second place, and a $15,000 grant and $1,000 in services for 10 third place winners. The contest is in its eighth year and is open to all US businesses. If you're a university or postgrad student, there are even more competitions available. So check with your school and search online. Number two, crowdfunding. Sites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo allow you to raise money for your food truck from people all over the internet. In return for their money, you offer food or something else once your truck is open. A few things to keep in mind. Creating your profile page takes a lot of work, akin to writing a partial business plan. You'll need to frequently update your page to show your progress and answer any questions that people have. Only people in your immediate area will consider investing in your food truck, so the pool of investors will be quite small. This is why most of the ideas on crowdfunding sites are for products that can be shipped to people's homes or for services that can be delivered online. But there have been successfully funded restaurants and food trucks on these platforms before. If you don't reach your funding goal, all of the money is returned to the investors. So if you do decide to go this route, set a realistic goal. If your idea is funded successfully, the crowdfunding platform keeps a percentage of the total amount raised. Number three, Kiva. Kiva is technically also a crowdfunding platform, but I put it as its own separate financing option because first of all, it's a loan, not an investment. In other words, you're expected to pay back whatever amount you receive within a certain time frame. With sites like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, however, you don't ever technically pay back any of the money you receive. Instead, you offer food or something else in exchange. The advantage of using Kiva is that the loan is at 0% interest, which is obviously amazing, and the repayment period is usually around 36 months, depending on the size of your loan, your projections, and so on. The total process takes typically 45 days, so it's not very different from a traditional bank loan. The main disadvantage of Kiva is that the maximum amount you can apply for is $10,000, but this is reserved only for people that have already been in business for a few years. For brand new businesses, the most you can expect to get is around $3,000. Also, to even start the process, you need to convince 10 or more friends or family members to loan you $10 to $25 each in a process they call social underwriting, which is how you prove that you're not just a deadbeat looking for some free money. Anyway, for a 0% interest loan, Kiva isn't a bad option but it alone probably won't be enough to fund your needs. Number four, credit cards. There are 0% introductory APR credit cards that you can apply for. This means that for a set period of time, typically 12 to 18 months, you don't have to pay any interest at all on your total credit card balance. You only have to make the minimum payment each month, which is usually like $40. But beware, once that introductory period is up, you'll either have to make a huge payment or start racking up crazy amounts of interest on your credit card balance. Interest rates are over 20% in some cases. If you're interested in this option, you'll most likely have to apply for a personal credit card because if you apply for a business credit card when your business generates zero revenue, your credit limit will be very low. I cover credit cards in depth in chapter 12. The following are more traditional financing options. Number one, SCORE and SBDC. Before you start to search for money, see if there's a SCORE location near you. SCORE is a nonprofit government organization that has volunteer financial experts who offer you free advice on anything related to the financial aspects of your business. They can guide you in your search for financing options, and they can even help you after you start operations. If there's no location near you, you can still contact a SCORE mentor through their email or phone. Visit SCORE.org for more info. You can also see if there's a local Small Business Development Center, or SBDC, near you. It won't have personal financial mentors like SCORE, but it does offer tons of free resources for everything related to your business, not just finance related. Visit americasbdc.org for more info. Number two, friends and family. 
A lot of small business owners get started with a combination of their own savings and money from friends and family. If you're in a position to ask, and you have people close to you that you think may be willing to give you a loan, come up with a detailed business plan. You want to show them that you've thought this through and that they have a very good chance of getting their money back. I cover business plans briefly in Chapter 14. Friends and family will typically not require any formal paperwork, so it's up to you whether you want to draft contracts or not. However, be prepared to lose some friends and even some family members if your business fails and you can't pay them back. Number three, bank loan. Also referred to as a term loan, a bank loan is perhaps the second most popular traditional financing option. You'll typically meet with a business loan officer, present your business plan and finance needs, and they'll send along your request for approval from an underwriter. My husband and I would like to open a cookie store. We've done all the research and I'm very confident we can turn a profit. I've brought some samples if you'd like to try one. She said one. Take one. Mm, well, these are delicious. Let me just run this by my supervisor. Yes! Banks will take a lot of factors into account, such as your personal credit score, your previous business experience, and how much collateral you have. Collateral is anything you own that the bank can take from you to repay the loan in case you can't pay it back. Common types of collateral include homes, cars, and jewelry. For your personal credit score, you'll want it to be at least in the high 600s. Otherwise, most banks may turn you down or offer you really bad terms because a low credit score means that you have a higher risk of being unable to pay the loan back. Things that lead to lower credit scores include having lots of debt, having late or missed credit card payments, spending close to your credit card limit each month, and so on. You can check your personal credit score for free once every year from each of the three credit reporting bureaus. Just search online for Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion and request a free credit report. For those of you with low credit scores, keep watching. The fourth financing option is for you. I got you, dog. If you're approved for the bank loan, read over the terms very carefully before signing anything. One of the first things to look at is the interest rate. Aside from your personal credit score, the interest rate also heavily depends on the economy at the time. Generally, when the economy is strong, interest rates are higher, and when it's weak, rates are lower. The next thing to look at is the repayment period, or term length, which just means how long you have to repay the loan. This also really depends on a few factors, like the total amount requested, your credit score, and so on. But typically, the range is between 5 and 10 years. The third thing to look at are all the fees, of which there may be many. The two big ones are the origination fee and the repayment penalty. The origination fee is what you pay to the bank to process your loan. It's a one-time fee that's usually between 3 to 5% of your total loan amount. All banks charge you this fee, so make sure you take this fee into account when you put in your loan request. For example, if the total amount you need to search a food truck is $50,000 and you request only $50,000, you might be left with only $47,500 once the bank charges you the origination fee. And that was a big mistake. The other big fee is a prepayment penalty, but this isn't charged by all banks. Prepayment simply means that you pay back the entire loan amount before the repayment period finishes, so you can avoid paying some interest. For example, if you pay back a 10-year loan in only 9 years, you don't have to pay interest on that 10th year. But if your bank charges you a prepayment penalty, you'll have to pay them a fee for paying off the loan early. Anyway, bank contracts are always ridiculously long, and there are way too many details to cover in this course. So I'd advise going over the entire thing with a lawyer. I go over free and low-cost legal services at the end of Chapter 10. Number 4, SBA-backed loan. The SBA is the U.S. Small Business Administration, and it offers financing incentives for new and existing small businesses. One of these incentives allows people who don't automatically qualify for a traditional bank loan to get approval. Basically, the SBA will partner with certain banks and guarantee 85% of a business loan. So instead of the bank taking on all the risk, it will tag team with the SBA, which means the bank is more willing to take on riskier clients. Another advantage of an SBA-backed loan is that they have longer repayment periods. So if a normal bank loan has a 10-year repayment period, an SBA-backed one might be 12 years. Although this means you'll end up paying more interest, the monthly payments are smaller because they're spread out over 12 years instead of only 10 years. The last advantage of SBA-backed loans is that their upfront fee, called the guarantee fee, is only 2% of the total loan amount, which is lower than the 3-5% to you would pay in origination fees from a normal bank loan. However, there are some very important things to note about SBA-backed loans. First, SBA-backed loans often have higher interest rates than regular bank loans. So although you may pay less upfront in fees, you'll probably end up paying more in interest payments in the long run. Second, SBA-backed loans sometimes take longer for approval than normal bank loans. 
you can expect to wait up to two months or longer to get the funds. To apply for an SBA-backed loan, go to the SBA website, look up their list of approved lenders, and contact one of those banks. You'll be applying for the SBA 7A loan. Number five, credit union loan. Most people immediately think of a bank when they think about getting a commercial loan. A credit union is like a traditional bank, except that it's nonprofit and member owned. Therefore, it can offer lower interest rates than traditional banks. The only catch is that each credit union has its own set of requirements for membership, the most common of which is that you must live in the city or town where the credit union is located. And obviously, you'll need good personal credit. Do a simple search online for credit unions near you. Number six, equipment financing. Your cooking equipment can count for 30% or more of your entire food truck startup costs. Therefore, instead of purchasing all your equipment outright, you may want to look into equipment financing, which lets you pay for everything in monthly installments plus interest. You can apply for equipment financing through multiple ways, through a bank, through a financing company, through the retailer where you plan to buy the equipment, and so on. You should obviously shop around for the best rates and terms. The equipment will have a lien on it until you're 100% paid up. A lien basically means that the company that financed the equipment owns it until you pay for it in full. Because of this, your personal credit score doesn't have to be as high as with a traditional bank loan. The repayment period may also be longer. The downside is that the interest rate for equipment financing is generally higher than for bank loans. Number seven, equity investors. If you've ever watched Shark Tank, you're probably familiar with equity investment. We are here today seeking $200,000 in exchange for 8% equity in our company. I'm seeking $450,000 in exchange for 10% of my company. We're seeking a $250,000 investment for a 7.5% stake in our company. Instead of loaning you money, investors will give you their money for an equity stake or part ownership in your business. The advantage of this over a loan is that you won't need to go through the long application and approval process, you won't need excellent credit, and there's no money you have to repay. This means that if your business fails, you won't have to pay back any of the investor's money. The downside is obviously that you'll have to give a part of your business. So you may have to split profits at the end of each year, you may have to consult your investors before making certain decisions, and so on. If you decide to take on equity investors, make sure you draft a proper contract with a lawyer. Once you start operating, more financing options will open up, such as merchant cash advances and lines of credit. Since you may be interested in these later on, I'll include a brief explanation of these two options here. Number one is called a merchant cash advance. Whenever a customer pays you by credit card, the credit card processor, also called the merchant processing company, authorizes the payment with the customer's bank and then puts the money into your bank account. They're basically like the middleman between you and the customer. If you process a lot of credit card payments, you may receive a message like, you've been approved for a loan of $10,000. Click for more details. If you take the $10,000 loan, the processing company will automatically deduct $1,000 each month from your account for the next 12 months until the total loan amount plus interest is paid off. If you do the math, that works out to an interest rate of 20%. This is just an example with made up numbers, but generally merchant cash advances do have higher interest rates than most other financing options. Also, the repayment period is usually only one to two years. However, you don't need to fill out tons of paperwork, you don't need good personal credit, and you can get the money in maybe a few days instead of a few months. Number two is a line of credit. A line of credit is offered by many banks and can also be backed by the SBA. It's like a loan, except that instead of receiving the entire loan amount all at once, the bank approves you for a total set amount of money, and you can choose to draw from that pool of money as many times as you want, whenever you want, during a specified time frame. What do you mean? So let's say you're approved for a $10,000 line of credit. Tomorrow, you take out $2,000 to pay for a new fridge. Next week, you take out $1,000 to fix your truck's engine. And then maybe you decide you don't need the remaining $7,000. So you pay interest on the draws of $2,000 and $1,000, but not on the remaining $7,000. A line of credit is good for businesses who have expenses coming up, but may not know exactly how much in total they'll need. The disadvantage of a line of credit is that it'll have a higher interest rate than a traditional loan. Also, the total amount you can receive will be lower than with a traditional bank loan.